Good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to HYCM's workshop. I do hope you can hear my voice and see my screen a okay. If you could just let me know that everything's working as it should be, I will, uh, just as other folks are coming into the webinar, don't forget as we're looking at different instruments, different trading scenarios, the whole idea of this workshop is that it's an educational trading workshop where you look over the shoulder of someone's professional trading background and you see how I go about making uh, trading decisions. I'm going to be uh, sharing with you the methodology uh, that I use. But remember, it's not a signal trading service. Um, it's an educational one. Those of you who attend regularly understand how this uh, works. Don't forget, you can ask questions in the chat box and the question box. And today we're looking at the plan for the Australian labor data. Now, whenever I'm trading risk events, there's a very simple process that I use, always the same. And that process is I look what's expected, what's going to be a surprise, what's the bigger picture, does that surprise change the bigger picture, and what's the potential instrument to trade. So I'm going to be looking at one particular currency pair today, and I'm going to outline to you what that is, why that is, and the potential that I see for the pair. Now, before we get stuck into the webinar, let me just go over to my other screens. There we go, right. Now, the first thing we need to look at when we're looking at any risk event is what's expected. And what we can see with the Reserve Bank of Australia, what we can see is their last interest rate decision was a surprise interest rate hike. Don't forget, you can follow along on the HYCM blog. Uh, most of these articles are populated by myself and all of, the pop, all of the articles on the Central Bank Watch are written by myself as I look at Central Bank surprises. Now, at the last RBA interest rate meeting, the RBA surprise markets with a 25 basis point rate hike. And the Aussie dollar gained significantly against the New Zealand dollar. So after that surprise interest rate hike, short term interest rate markets are saying, OK, what we expect from here is we expect one more interest rate hike up to 3.94%. Um, so they could say, well, that's no more interest rate hikes from now. And short-term interest rate markets are pricing 87% chance that there's no change at the next RBA meeting. That's on the 6th of June. So really, the expectations is that the Reserve Bank of Australia has probably had the last interest rate hike. Now, that last interest rate hike from the Reserve Bank of Australia could well be the case, and that's what markets are pretty much expecting now. Now, earlier in the week, the Australian minutes were released, and those Australian minutes were released earlier this week. Um, and the bottom line of these minutes was that you know the markets did we hike by twenty? The RBA thought do we hike by twenty five basis points? Do we hold? At the end, they said members also agreed that further increases in interest rates may still be required, but that would be depend on how the economy and inflation evolve. So those minutes have only just come out. So what that does is that shows you that the Reserve Bank of Australia is pushing back against some of this pricing, saying, well, actually, we may need to hike interest rates again. So that's potentially a reason for the Australian dollar to gain. Now, on top of that RBA decision, we also had some data out for New Zealand this week on the 12th. But at the end, it was, when was it? Yeah, 12th of May. It was actually sort of end of last week, where we saw the New Zealand dollar gain significantly. And what it was, there were cooler New Zealand inflation projections over one and two year horizons. So if you look at the Aussie and New Zealand dollar pair, what we saw was significant upside on that 12th of May against the Australian dollar. Why? Because it looked like the situation in New Zealand was showing cooling inflation. That means the RBNZ will need to do less. So that will mean that the Australian dollar would gain against 
the New Zealand dollar. Why? Because the RBA is more aggressive and the RBA NZ is less aggressive. And whenever you're looking at the difference between central banks and their interest rate expectations, always look at the bond yield spread. You can see what I've done, I've overlaid here the Australian 10 year bond yield and the New Zealand 10 year bond yield. And notice how the Aussie New Zealand dollar tracks that bond yield very closely. And it's the same with other bond yield spreads as well. And essentially, on the, after the cooler inflation in New Zealand, um, we suddenly saw the Australian dollar gain against the New Zealand dollar. Why? Because the RBA is expected to be more aggressive than the RBNZ, right? Now, also notice that we had a trend line break of that bond yield spread. So if you just take that off, for the, take the candlestick, you see how, you know, you look at that touch, touch, break, retest. So we're now at a key retest of that bond yield spread. So this, in this major support area, is an obvious place we'd expect to find buyers at this 1.0639 region, right? But whether the Aussie New Zealand dollar gains higher or lower is going to depend on the latest data point. Now, if we look at inflation in Australia, remember, central banks around the world, they want inflation to be at 2%. It's, you know, in the UK, it's over 10%, Europe, it's 7%, US, it's 4.9%. And in, in Australia, you can see here, headline inflation is 7%. Now, what that means is if inflation comes in higher, the RBA is going to have to do more. Okay. Now, coming up overnight, we have Australian employment data. I just uh, show you the, the calendar. You'll see here the employment data is coming up overnight. Now, employment is either inflationary or deflationary. This is how it relates to inflation. If you think about it like this, if lots of people are in work, that means they can command higher wages. Because if unemployment is low, if lots of people are in work, that means companies have to offer higher wages to incentivize the limited workforce into their positions. So if the employment data is very good, if that comes in green, that's seen as inflationary. If it's inflationary, what will the Reserve Bank of Australia have to do? They'd have to be more likely to hike interest rates. So that means the Australian dollar would gain against the New Zealand dollar if it's an inflationary print, right? So if this comes in high, green, then that's inflationary and you expect the Australian dollar to gain against the New Zealand dollar. Now, let me add some more detail to it. If you're not with, I'm just going to check questions to make sure everyone's with me. If you're not with me, just give me a nod, speak to me on the chat. Um, will get you sorted, but that should all pre that should all be pretty clear so far. Now, we've got 2.30 a.m. the Australian Labour data coming up. So if this comes in green, you'd expect that to result in more Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar upside. Now, what we'd look for, you can see full-time employment is expected to come in at 72, was it 72.2K previous? The employment change is expected to fall to 25,000, and the unemployment is expected to stay at 3.5%. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for an employment change above 40,000. Now, if you look at the employment change here, prior was um, 53,000. If it comes in above 40,000, that is above the market's maximum expect expectations. So 40,000 is going to be positive. Now, what you want to see is you want to see the majority of that gain in the full-time section rather than the part-time section. Think about it like this. Full-time work is better for the economy and more inflationary than part-time work. So you want to see a headline print of 40,000 plus with the majority of those coming from the full-time employment. That will be more supportive for the Australian dollar. And what you'd anticipate is the unemployment rate coming in 
3.5% or lower. So if that if the unemployment came in at 3.4 or lower, employment came in at 40,000 or higher, full-time employment was the majority of those 40,000 jobs, and the participation rate was 66.7% or better, 66.8%, if that's all in green, plus above maximum expectations, you would expect the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, to gain rapidly. Now, you'd also expect the bond yield spread to move higher, and you'd expect this Aussie New Zealand dollar to retest up for those 1.0750 highs, and I'd personally expect another leg higher. Looking forward to next week, you can see on the 24th of May, we have the RBNZ interest rate decision on the 24th of May. Now, at the moment, economists' projections that they're going to hike by 25 basis points. And we did have some projections by ANZ that they're expecting them to hike by 25 basis points. And short-term interest rate markets are expecting you know, 50 basis points higher, so about 5.66% terminal rate. So that is you know, a, one rate hike at a bit. Um, and they're expecting 99% chance that they're going to hike by uh, 25 basis points at the next interest rate decision. So that's what's expected. So all of this means the um, Aussie New Zealand dollar pet now, some, uh, X-Men. Oh, hello, x -Men. hello, I'm new here. Are these fundamental indicators, long-term indicators or short-term indicators? So what I'm doing, x -Men, is I'm looking at the currency markets from a macro fundamental position. Now, central banks, when central banks rise, raise interest rates, that tends to support a country's currency. So when interest rates are rising, currencies tend to move. When interest rates are falling, currency rates tend to fall. So these are a combination of long-term indicators with short-term catalysts. The short-term catalysts will be the risk events, because what will happen if we get to Earlier, uh, later on uh, this evening, 2.30 a.m. on the 18th of May, that's 2.30 a.m. UK time. If that comes in a sea of green, 40,000 plus, unemployment below 3.4%, participation rate 66.7% or better, the majority of the gains in full-time employment, you'd expect the Australian dollar to gain rapidly against the New Zealand dollar because short-term interest rate markets will perceive that the RBA needs to be more aggressive, Axmed. OK, so that's why in that scenario, you would expect short term upside in the Aussie New Zealand dollar pair. And then next week, we've got the RBNZ meeting as well, and then it will be a reassessment. So this would be a short term opportunity that would probably last for two or three sessions. So um, speculative tra traders would enter long at market with stops just underneath 1.0600. Um, now, there are significant risks to this outlook, and the, the risks to this outlook, which we always have to, every outlook has a risk, and this is no exception. The risk here is if the employment data comes in very weak, then the Australian dollar can lose value quickly. Now, I saw this very um, concerning seasonal pattern that over the last 23 years, you can see that the Australian dollar has lost value around 75% of the time against the New Zealand dollar. So seasonally, there's a really strong seasonal pattern where the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar pair falls between now and the 28th of May. So that is quite a worrying pattern for the outlook. But in the near term, if we get a big, strong employment beat, you would expect the Aussie New Zealand dollar to gain. But just bear in mind, there's some seasonal presence and when you see a seasonal pattern that's as pronounced as that, um, it's likely that there's a reason for it. Now, I don't know what the reason would be, but it's really quite notable. You can see a similar pattern around the end of the year. See how the Aussie New Zealand dollar loses a lot of value into year end? I mean, and that's really quite noticeable. And you've got a similar pattern from a sort of peak here um, around uh, this, this period. So when you put that all together, 
just need to be aware that there will be a significant risk of buying in at market. So if you decided to buy in at market now, then the risk is that the employment data is really strong, uh, is, is really weak rather, and then you'd expect the Aussie New Zealand dollar to potentially fall through. But the place to define and limit risk will be just underneath that 1.0600 region and below that S3 pivot point. So it'd be like about 1.0570 would be the place to define and limit your risk. Because if price goes that far lower, then you can be sure that you're wrong on your analysis. So there are risks involved here, but this is a very interesting currency pair to be uh, looking at. Um, let's see, are there any other questions that folks have? Any other questions um, regarding any other markets or any other issues that are going on? That's the outlook for the Australian labour data. I think that's uh, quite straightforward from, from there. If you didn't catch it from the beginning, do come back and pick up the recording, uh, hopefully later today, um, ahead of the Australian labour data, which is coming out early tomorrow morning. Just going to check the chat. And the questions, good to see you here, Ratio, Ignatius, Johan, Eddie, Hashit, good to have some uh, good familiar faces. Axmed, welcome, this is your first uh, time here, so very warm welcome to you. Does anything you're not sure on markets or thinking, oh, I don't know what, you know, what's going on with sentiment or any other issue, um, just ping it up on the chat and I'm very happy to help if I can. Hey, Horatio. Glad you can make it. But I mean, this is quite a good opportunity, this um, RBA one. Yeah, the recording's available on the YouTube channel. It comes up on the YouTube channel. So you might want to look at things again, especially if you're new, Xmed. Um, you know, go over the recording uh, shortly. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. OK, so nice one. Uh, Horatio's got a nice idea for us. And this is a good learning point. Thank you for sharing, Horatio. That's good for everyone. So Horatio is in a pound CAD short after yesterday's Canadian CPI data. So this is a good example, all right? Do you see the way the, um, the CAD strengthened rapidly against the pound yesterday? Do you see that? Uh, very strong uh, reaction yesterday in the Canadian dollar as it gained. And that was all due to this piece of inflation data that came out from the Bank of Canada. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me find it. It was around 1.30, wasn't it? No, hang on. Am I getting... Let me just check. There we go, looking at the wrong day. I thought I was going mad there. Right, okay, Canadian inflation data. Right, do you see how the inflation data, this is what Horatio did, right? So Horatio yesterday saw, oh, look, the Canadian inflation's coming high. Headline 4.1%, month on month. Look, 0.7% above the maximum expected. Year on year, look, it's 4.4% above maximum expectations. The trim means high as well. The median's 4.2% and the pre prize revised lower. But on balance, look, this is hot inflation for Canada. Now, the Bank of Canada, what they had been saying is that markets were thinking they wouldn't have to hike interest rates again. And they were expected to have hit terminal rate, right? Now, if you look, you see here, a week ago, markets were saying, oh, Bank of Canada, it's terminal rate. It's only lower from here. But after that data, do you see how it's pushed higher expectations oh perhaps the bank of canada will have to do more that means the canadian dollar gains right so a ratio was thinking great this is a good opportunity for me to buy the canadian dollar and i want to buy it against a currency which i'm expecting weakness and a ratio was expecting weakness in the pound so he paired strength with weakness and there we had a pound cad short right and it's an excellent trade. I know some people were trading the EuroCAD yesterday. I personally traded the Australian dollar CAD yesterday because there was some negative sentiment about, about uh, China, which weighed on the Australian dollar. So pound CAD, great trade. You see, you could have 
taking retracement back down to this level. Um, Euro CAD, Aussie CAD. Now, the difficulty comes here is when you retest these kind of shoulders, you can often get a bit of sentiment shift. And sentiment then tends to last two or three sessions. So from a longer term point of view, you know, you might you might look at this on the longer term point of view and it will come down to what you think of the pound. Do you think the pound is going to be losing value over the me medium term? And if you just look at this sort of trend line break that you've got here, you've got a significant area. Price just moved into that support level. All right, so that's a big level. So if, the, if that level capitulates lower, then you could, you, you'd expect another run down to that sort of maybe that S3 pivot. Um, otherwise, this isn't key support. So at the moment, price isn't key support. This would be a typical area where you might want to take profit. Um, Horatio, thank you very much for sharing. That's a really good trade. Um, I know some folks took a Euro CAD short as well. Another kind of um, similar trade. Okay, and that trade you can see moving nicely to the downside and you see here you have that trend line broken retest fallen and lower so again you know very nice trade and i took the aussie cad and i closed it out yesterday and i probably took the worst of these three um and you'll see why i just sort of fell down into this um I got a very bad fill and I fell down into this big kind of support level. So Horatio did better than me. And those who took who did Euro, Euro CAD did better than me as well. Um, and um, yeah, but I hope that's helpful. Horatio, thank you so much for sharing that. That's been really helpful. Oh, Horatio, great. Look, you, you're using it. You're, you're better than me. And I wrote the articles. Horatio says he read the research on the pound. And after the UK jobs and the CAD CPI, I got the idea. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice idea. Well done, Horatio. I'll have to ask you. <laughs> I'll have to come to you for my own advice. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Excellent stuff. But that goes to show you, you know, what's possible. Um, and just looking at these risk events and knowing the base case uh, scenario uh, really helps. And then you see that what's happened is you know why currency markets are moving in the direction they are, and you know the reasons for them. Um, now, not these events don't come up all the time. You, you might get, you know, like three or five good ones a month. Um, uh, but that was one of them. So, good stuff. Okay, folks. Uh, great to have you here. Don't forget, I am back again on Monday, and. If you want to come along on Monday, um, what I do is I get folks ready for the week ahead. So I'll look at the week ahead and we'll look at what's coming up. We're going to see the good opportunities uh, and the most high probability opportunities. And then on the Wednesday, I dig into something specific like we did today for the Aussie New Zealand dollar. And don't forget, you can come back on Monday and say, hey, Giles, how did you handle that trade on Wednesday? What did you enter it? Did you not enter it? And what did you do, et cetera, et cetera. You know, tell me what you did. Um, get, you know, my view on it. It's not that I'm the guru or I'm right all the time, anything like that. But when we talk with each other, when we share ideas, um, things we've learned, it helps us grow and become better, better traders. Okay, folks, thank you all very much. I hope you take care and uh, really enjoy the rest of your session. Special big shout out to Horatio for an excellent pound CAD short with a fantastic rationale and uh, really well done. And welcome to you, Xmet, for your first time. It'd be good to see you again. Uh, don't forget, recording is available on the YouTube channel. If it's slow coming up, please, please, please email support, message support. It lets HYCM support know that the webinar is appreciated and folks are more likely to get it up quickly if they can see the demand so please do that thank you all very much take care and enjoy the rest of your session thanks everyone bye bye